Let's take a trip up north of the border to a man I haven't spoken to for quite some time, Willie Rennie, leader of the Scottish Liberal Democrats. Willie, a very good morning to you. Very good morning. How are you? Now, I can say to you, I don't know if you'll remember this, uh, welcome back to the Independent Republic of Mike Graham, which used to be situated in, uh, uh, in, in, the, uh, in, the, in that big industrial estate uh, in the South Gile, just outside of Edinburgh. But, uh, but that was many years ago. A very fine place. I passed it on the train this morning. Oh, did you? Great. Absolutely. Well, I was reminded of, of, of your um, your rather good sense of humour when you tweeted out about Ian Blackford um, uh, the other day after his rather uh, ill-judged tweet about the photographer up in the, up in the Highlands. It seems extraordinary that he could get away with that, doesn't it? Well, it is, and I don't think he has got away with it because I think everybody's running a distance, including the, the nationalists. Mm. Um, I mean, he's got form on this. Yeah. I don't know if you remember, there was people at the... There was kind of thugs at the border shooting abuse at cars who were travelling over yeah. the border. Um, and he endorsed their sentiments, which was quite extraordinary. So he's got form on this. Um, and I just wish he would stop it because there's enough anti-English sentiment in Scotland as it is without him having to. Well, exactly right. I mean, we've obviously talked about the whole situation with the SNP in Scotland quite a lot on this show. But I mean, how is it actually working at the moment when uh, supposedly, according to the First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, you cannot travel to Scotland if you are in England? How, are, they, are they policing that in any way? No, I mean, the police, to be, to be fair, I've actually taken quite a light-touch approach to it. It's trying to encourage people to do the right thing rather than enforcing it. Um, they put it into law. Um, effectively, it's not too different from what's in England. Mm. Um, so I've not got too many problems with that, but I think we need to make sure that we, we have the right approach so it's encouragement rather than enforcement. Right. And I'm seeing a story this morning uh, being reported in Scotland that there's some suggestion that, that Christmas bubbles must not be larger than eight. Um, and I'm sort of slightly confused and a bit frustrated at how different policies are in all four nations of the United Kingdom. It seems to me that, you know, they should be more similar, shouldn't they? I, I think it's... I mean, we have kind of diverged some months ago and I suppose we've got to try and keep a bit of consistency within each country so that people understand the rules for their area mm. and it's reasonably simple in Scotland you can put in your postcode into a postcode checker and you can find out what you're supposed to do in your area every time it changes however my inbox gets flooded with inquiries and the exceptions I mean today we've just found out that the rules don't really cover the fact that the ferry leaves Lerwick in Shetland on one day when we're in the five day period for Christmas, right. arrives in Aberdeen the next day. So <laughs> are those people going to be breaking the rules or not? Right. So those kind of things keep getting thrown up and it's really important to try and clarify them as quickly as possible in each you know, region or nation of the country. Well, right, because if you've got family in Edinburgh and you've got family in Glasgow and you live in Stirling, it's not that clear what you can do, is it? Yeah, there's not a rough a lot, actually, that you can do just now. You're kind of discouraged from going to any other house because the rates were increasing quite substantially. Thankfully, it's going a bit down now. We've mm. managed to, to flatten the curve a bit and it's on the way down. But we can't live like this forever. What we need is a much more sustainable way of making this happen. That every time the virus goes up, instead of having the proper testing and tracing regime in place to hunt it down and drive it out, we sh you know, we've got this kind of crude lockdown measures that you know, are crippling many businesses and causing massive havoc in people's social lives. Yeah. So get the apparatus of government right rather than constantly resorting to these lockdowns. Well, could you not have a word with your man in Westminster, Mr Davey, and say to him, look, you know, maybe you should try voting against the government occasionally? Uh, yeah, he does. Uh, and so do we. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I'm talking about but, in terms of the lockdown. Pandemic, right? You've got to try and uh, make sure that you're, you're doing the responsible thing rather than just voting against the government. But, you know, Boris is not handling it especially well, so I suspect he's voting against the government more than I am up here. No, but I mean, the point is, is that we will have another, another vote next week. It may well be that if there is lockdown imposed, it could be diverted and it could be reversed if enough people vote against it. And there, yeah, there might be but... plenty. There might be plenty of Tories who will vote against it. And I think if if you want to be responsible, you've also got to think about people's businesses, people's livelihoods, you know, people's mental health. It's not just about the spread of the disease, which is not killing that many people. Yeah, but, but we are where we are, Mike. Um... You know, if we had the apparatus in place to stop this from happening, then we wouldn't need the crude lockdowns. But the government on both sides of the border have been incompetent on this. They haven't really got up to speed. They didn't use the summer well to get the apparatus in place to hunt down and drive out the virus from our communities. So now we are where we are. So I think you probably have to support the kind of measures for next week rather than just an automatic lifting. But we haven't got the other 
protections in place to save people's lives. And what will happen in Scotland if, say, for example, um, the announcements are made today by Matt Hancock, I presume that will only apply to a large extent in England, will it? So Nicola Sturgeon will then impose her own tears, right? Yeah, she's got a statement today at uh, later on about 20 past 12, which I'll be part of. Right. Um, so she'll be setting out some of the Christmas arrangements um, for Scotland, which will not be too dissimilar. But, you know, we have extended households, whereas you have bubbles. You know, we have it for single people. You've got it for whole households and families. Um, so there's a, a difference north and south of the border. But, you know, as long as it's explained clearly in each country, I think we can cope with it. Mm. We want as much similarity as possible, especially at Christmas when people are crossing borders, which is why the call that we made earlier on this year for a Christmas plan was eventually adopted by all four nations and governments of the, the country. And now we've got this plan in place. So I think that's a, a good thing, a step yeah. in the right Well, I spent last Christmas in Scotland, funnily enough, but I'm not coming this year in case I meet Ian Blackford at Gretna Green. <laughs> He's waving a flag at me. <laughs> but let me ask you just one final question, Willie. What is going on with this inquiry into the Alex Salmon situation? Because I'm reading today that the SNP have failed to hand over key documents, uh, which is basically stymieing the whole investigation. Why are they doing that? Uh, well, they've obviously got something to hide. Um, and it's a terrible saga. It's been going on for weeks and weeks and weeks where the government... Um, are voted against in Parliament. We all combine together and say you need to release the legal advice and the government says we're considering it very seriously and we have to have another vote to remind them that what we had said before. So the government should just come clean because this is what's at the heart of this. It's half a million pounds of taxpayers' money right. that was wasted in a, in a court action um, and lost. And secondly, um, a number of women um, who had to go to court um, had obviously um, suffered in, in many ways. Um, and we need to remember that those those people are at the heart of this whole investigation. And we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that. And that's why we need to get to the truth. And, and clearly the question is, it's one of those, you know, what did she know and when did she know it, right? Yeah, that's part of it. And some of the judgment as well about whether to pursue the or continue the action that Alex Salmond had taken uh, against the government about the the process, the disciplinary process of sorts, the complaints process within government, uh, which he eventually won in the court of session. That was separate from, remember, the, the legal case in the, in the High Court. Um, but yeah, so that's at the, the centre of all this. So we just need to get to the truth of what went on, you know, for the sake of these women. Well, it would be a nice thing if they actually cooperated with their own investigation. But Willie, great to talk to you. Thanks very much indeed.